Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to go over facets and how to use them to customize your dash. So your dash is that screen that opens that's got a home, inventory, contacts, etc. on it, uh, worlds. Uh, it's uh, quite customizable, especially on the home tab. Um, you can customize sort of everything about that uh, using facets. Now facets are small sort of square based things which have various pieces of information on them and sometimes control such as your uh, online state, your microphone level, uh, buttons which open various worlds and various panels and windows in your screen, but also panels um, and things that just show information as well like the time, the sync status, how much storage you're using, things like that. I'm going to go ahead and open up my dash now and you'll see that I've got it it's focused on my home tab and you'll see, oh actually, uh, oh yeah, smooth POV, there we go. And you'll see that uh, it's a little bit more customized compared to the uh, stock dash that you may be seeing if this is your first time. So you'll probably have like a big square here which shows your controls. I've removed that because I'm very familiar with Neo so I don't need that in there. Um, other custom things that you'll see here are the camera dash, there'll be more on that one later. The world you're in facet, that's mine, I created it, I, is a link in the video description where I talk about it a little bit, I'll go over it briefly as well later. Uh, up in the top left here you'll see a button that's from Turk, it opens an inspector in user space. Now user space is basically a uh, separate world which only your private stuff runs in. So for example the camera UI to the left here, my dash and a few other things are running in what's called this user space area. Um, and that opens an inspector for user space, which can be useful for um, debugging dash based stuff, etc. You shouldn't need it that much, so I won't go over it too much, but I did want to cover what it is so I didn't get comments about what it is. Uh, you'll see that I've got a red button up here. This opens up the uh, cameras for streaming UI. Um, and to the right of that is a uh, button here which turns on and off UI edit mode. I'll be talking about UI edit mode in just a second, um, but after I've talked about it, I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to install that UI edit mode button. Uh, it's super useful, it's by H3 um, originally, and I love it because without it, I probably wouldn't use facets as much as I, did, I, I do currently do. So uh, that's facets for you. To edit them, what you need to do is turn on a mode called UI edit mode. Now UI edit mode is different from edit mode, which I cover in a different video, also linked in the video description. Um, and it can be turned on by a button combination. The button combination varies based on your controllers. I have a piece of text just to my right here that talks about them, but the information from that piece of text will also be in the video description. Like I said, once you've turned it on once or twice, you should be able to use uh, H3's button rather than uh, the combination as I often forget the combination. So for um, Index or Oculus, you can hold one of the dedicated user space buttons and double tap the other. For Vive or Windows Mixed Reality, you can hold both, hold down both menu buttons at the same time so both circles fill. So I'm going to do that now just to show you that it works. So I'm going to, on my index controllers, which I use the index, so I'm going to hold down the A button on my left controller, and I'm going to double tap the A button on my right controller. There we go, I had to do it twice because apparently I wasn't doing it hard enough or something, whatever. Um, and you'll see that a grid has now appeared, and there's also this button at the bottom here. This button indicates that you're in UI edit mode. Now that we're talking about the UI edit mode, I'm going to bring my dash a little bit closer so you can uh, see things as we go. Now that you're in UI edit mode, you may notice that if you move your lasers around that all the like parts of the UI are glowing with cyan when I aim at them, and that's because they're all movable. Let's start by moving around something simple. So I'm going to move this paste content from clipboard button and I'm going to grab it and you'll see it's now in my hand and I can actually move it around. So let's say I wanted it uh, up there. Let go. Now it's up there. Let's say I want it up here now. It's there. Uh, I can also resize it to be different sizes. Um, let's go over that because it will come up later when you're adding your own facets. So um, when I put it on here, you'll see that there's a default box. This is usually the size which the facet will prefer to be at. So it's a recommended size, if you like, for the facet. We can actually change that. So you'll see within the larger um, green square, there's a smaller green square that is aligning to each of the squares on this grid. That is how you make it larger. So what we can do here is say I wanted it to be really big. I can put my uh, laser here and I can hold down trigger or primary and I can drag, a bit like drawing a box in, a, in an art program and I can drag until it's as big as I want it to be. There we go. And now look at that. I've got a giant paste content from clipboard button. If you don't like the size it is, you can always grab it, which will pop it out again, and then it will return to that preferred size, and you can just drop it to wherever you'd like. There you go. I want it to line up with core worlds here, so I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, laser where I want it to be, and then drag and let go, and now it lines up with that core worlds thing, so it's not that shorter width. So that's how you uh, customize and move around the existing um, 
uh, dash facets that you've got. These are all standard facets that you'll be seeing. Um, you can add custom facets, which I'll be going into next, but I also wanted to point out where you can find the standard facets just in case you accidentally delete one. By the way, to delete one, what you do is you grab it and it will be in your hand and then you open up the context menu and hit destroy. Exactly how you destroy another item, just uh, different because it's a facet. So that's good where you can find the standard facets. You can find the standard facets inside um, the Neos Essentials folder. So go to inventory, Neos Essentials, go to facets, and then you'll see all the standard facets here. You'll see some other stuff, but we'll cover that in just a moment. If you want to use one of these or replace one in your uh, dash, what you can do is you can select it in the inventory. But let's use the clock for this one. That's a good one. You can select it and you'll see this button that you might not have seen before is this square button here that's got uh, uh, an arrow coming out of one side of it and it's pink. This means spawn in user space. You can do this inside the Neos Essentials facets folder, but you have to do something else for custom facets. I'll show that in just a moment, but we'll do this one first. So I'm going to select the clock here and I'm going to hit this pink button. And now you'll see that I've got the clock in my hand. I can go back to the home screen and now I can aim at the uh, dash and I can say, boom. There's a clock. And again, I can use the drag feature to make it really big. So if I'm really concerned about the time, there you go. There's the time. And again, now I can just go ahead and destroy that one. So that's the standard facets where they are and how to put them on your dash. Let's go into some custom facets. The first one we're going to do is H3's uh, dash enable edit button, which I recommend putting up here on the top status bar. This status bar stays the same regardless of what tab you're on. So I'm on the you know, multiple tabs here and it's still there. So it's super useful to have up there. You can find this in H3's public folder. I've got a copy of H3's public folder in the world here just to show you what it looks like. You can find this inside the public folder called public folders in all capitals, which uh, will get, be given out to you by uh, new users or TNS team members if you're near them when you're logging in. If you're not near anyone or you want to grab it yourself, you can find it in the directory, which is a world I run. Um, just search for directory in the world browser and go over to that one. And then you can search for H3's folder and find it. It looks like that. Um, once you've got that, you can navigate to it. So I've got H3's folder in uh, a subfolder that I've got here called public folders. Um, and uh, I just look for H3's folder here. Uh, here it is. And I go to H3's facets. And then there's that button that we need. Uh, so you'll notice that when you select it here, you don't have that pink icon. And that's because it's in someone else's public folder. It's a security preventative measure and um, you know, just to make sure that you can't spawn other people's weird stuff that might be bad, you need to, first of all, save it to your own location. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and spawn it. So I'm going to double trigger on this and it will spawn in the world. This isn't in the UI world, so you'll see I can't put it on my dash here. But if I go to my inventory now, and what I recommend you do is you create a new folder. To do that, you can hit plus. I've already done it, but you can hit plus here, which will be create a new directory. I recommend doing that and calling it facets. And then inside here, I recommend saving this. So I'm going to grab it, hit plus. That saves it. And now that it's saved within a folder you control, you can select it and then use the uh, pink icon again here to spawn it into actual user space. Then we can go back to the home screen and we can drop it in here. And there you go, it's on there. I'm going to take it out of the status bar to show you how to put it in the status bar. So you can just grab it, chuck it in the status bar. There you go. And the reason why I suggest adding this one first is it makes edit, entering, uh, sorry, entering dash edit mode a lot easier. So I'm going to turn off UI edit mode here. And I'm just going to click this button and it turns it straight back on again. And off. And on. And I can do that on any tab because all of these tabs will eventually be editable so that you can have your own facets in each of these once the UI rework is done completely. So that's the first custom facet I advise you using. The second one is the mirror facet. I've got an older version of it here, um, but you can find a new version of it actually in the Neos Essentials folder. So you don't have to do that weird savey thing. Well, let's go there. So inventory, Neos Essentials, and then facets. And you'll see it here as adjustable mirror. You can hit the pink icon again here and it will spawn in the world. This was made by Syro and Gibbel. Uh, I'm going to use a, another tab of my dash here. I'm not going to cover this in this video, but if you're interested, do let me know. I'm not sure if it's supported, so I didn't want to cover it in this video, but it just gives me some space to play around with and show you. So I'm going to turn on UI edit mode here, and then I can drop this in place. And there we go. Now that this is in here, I can turn off UI edit mode. Um, this adjustable mirror has a number of buttons, like we can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, this one will do a sort of zoomed away approach. I'm still learning what all of these buttons do. They're not labeled, so feedback for the developers of this facet. 
uh, think about icons or labeling or something because it's unclear to me what some of these do. You can also use the one in the bottom left corner here which will turn off those buttons around it so it's just a nice bordered one that you can look at. Um, I like using this and many other people like using it because they can just open up their dash and they can see um, themselves to make sure their avatar is working and functioning normally. Uh, that one, because it's inside the Neos Essentials folder, you can use the pink to spawn it. Um, you don't have to save it to your inventory, as I said. Uh, so that's the uh, mirror facet that many of you might want. Um, there are a couple of other folders which I like, um, so I'm going to show you them now. There's Engie's folder. Um, now, Engie's folder is responsible for that uh, red button on the top status bar that opens up my camera streaming UI. Uh, again, you can find Engie's public folder inside the public folders public folder or inside the directory, which I mentioned earlier. Um, let's go to inventory. And we're going to go to uh, my public folder over here, which contains all my public folders I've saved. And then we'll go to Engie's public folder and then go inside facets. Once you're inside facets, you'll see these. I like these because of the um, just the clean visuals. They're really easy and recognizable. So you'll see here that there's the camera one. And again, if I wanted to use this, I would have to spawn it, grab it, go back to uh, go back to my facets folder. save it and then i can spawn it using that pink one and then i can use it in ui edit mode and i can put it up there and there you go so ng has a bunch of those in their public folder uh which do various things i'll cover a few but you can go check it out there's uh avatar creation avatar calibration debug menu uh user space inspector which is like the turks one um UI edit mode button, that's another uh, copy of uh, HD's one. Paste from clipboard, seated mode, and I guess that's... That might be a bug, NG, if you're watching. Uh, that one, I think, is freeform dash, but it's labeled as seated mode toggle. So that's NG's um, facets. You'll see that um, a lot of people's public folders have the equivalent of these, and I, I do want to cover everyone's creations. So there'll be more um, folders listed in the video description, but I don't have time to go through all of them. I like NG's because they're bright and clear and they fit nicely up there. Uh, the other folder I recommend for facets is a uh, Turks folder. So if you go to public, Turkic Publica, again, that's in the directory or the public folder, public folder. And then we can go inside facets here. You'll see Turks facets. Turk has a few that are. Um, really handy. There's one which turns on and off smooth turn. Uh, you can put that on your dash and turn on and off smooth turn. There's a profile one here, which is a little bit narrower. It's in, in square rather than being rectangular. So you can replace this profile one with the one up here that's kind of uh, more landscapey. That's a super cool one. Uh, and there's a lot more. I, I haven't really been through a lot of these and looked at them. I just knew that Turk had a lot that were super useful as they, they seem to always be working on some form of facet, etc. Like I said, there are a lot more facet creators that I'd love to showcase, um, but I, I just don't have time for this video. Uh, I'll leave some in the video description. If you see some cool facets, feel free to comment. I'll pin your comment if they're super cool. People are making them all the time. I'll do some tutorials on how to make them later, but I need to cover UIX before I get there, and I haven't managed to make the tutorial series on that just yet. That should be it for facets. Um, I will cut the video here. If you have any questions, do let me know. I'll also do a short one that will cover turning on UI edit mode and just dropping in that mirror facet because I know that's something that a lot of uh, VR chat players and other platform players want. So I'll, I'll do that in a video just shortly that's a little bit shorter than this one. This is a whole overview of facets. I will see you next time. Goodbye.